Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Executive Dashboard uh, webinar here with Jackrabbit. I am so excited to share this with y'all today. Um, you are going to see the new Executive Dashboard that has been uh, in the works for a while, and I am lucky enough to present this to y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go. So here is your new executive dashboard. Let's just take a minute and look at how pretty this thing is. Okay, have you looked at it? Perfect. All right. Now, if you are looking for that old um, or classic executive dashboard, you can go right over here to dashboards, click classic dashboard experience, and that will bring you back to that classic one that you have been seeing since you um, have likely been working with Jackrabbit. If you want to go back to that new one, you can just go right back to dashboards and click new dashboard experience. And that is where we are going to be focusing all of our time in here today. So before we get started, I do want to just define a couple of things because I am going to be saying a couple of words more often than not in this webinar. Those two words are going to be items and widgets. An item is anything that is clickable here in this new executive dashboard. So as you can see, when I'm hovering over these things here, it is turning a darker gray color. That is what I'm gonna to refer to as an item. It is an item, it is something that I can click. It will pull up a report. And that is what I am going to be referring to when I say item. When I say widgets, it is anything that is a piece of data that I can move as one. So as you can see, when I'm hovering over this, um, these six little dots over here, I can click move widget. So that is going to move all of my key metrics down or up wherever I would like them to be on this executive dashboard. So let's go ahead and move that back up. So there are widgets, which is key metrics, to-do tasks, alerts, aged accounts, revenue summary, and internal announcements. Very similar to when you were in that classic dashboard, you had those things as well. The only difference is that you cannot, um, or in this classic dashboard, you could not change how you saw these. So I could not move alerts down if I wanted. Uh, I could not move um, announcements up to the top if I wanted. But in this new dashboard experience, I absolutely can. Let's say I want those internal announcements to be at the very top. All I have to do is click these six dots, drag it all the way up where I want it, and that will save it. Um, there, You don't have to save it here. You can just drag it up and it will remember that the next time you log in. Now, if you want to keep using the classic dashboard experience, I would recommend um, using that, but also challenging yourself by going through this new dashboard uh, and just kind of getting familiar with it. We are going to eventually phase this out. Uh, I do not know exactly when, but I do know that you do have some time to get used to this new dashboard. Um, so don't fret, you do have some time, but I do just want to let you know that it is going to change at some point to only be this, uh, this new dashboard that you're looking at right now. So when we are looking at our settings, our dashboard settings are right here. It is still very similar to the dashboard settings that you had in the classic. And there are still those thresholds. You've got the green, the yellow, and the red thresholds that you can set. Obviously, you set that green and that yellow. Anything below the yellow is going to be the red threshold. So you can change all of these. Again, it's through enrollment, drops, age accounts, and birthdays. And then you can also go to the class registration, and this is where you can see what type of data you want. So if you want to display the registration status of complete, you can click that. Um, and then this is where you'll click Save and it will come up right there. Um, when we are looking at um, collapsing, you can collapse uh, your um, individual widgets just by clicking this little uh, minus button here. To expand it, you can click a plus button, or if you want to collapse all of them, you can go right over here and you can click this little minus button that says collapse all widgets. So as you can see, you can do that. Sometimes when I'm working in here, let's say I'm only working on to-do tasks, so I only want to look at my to-do tasks. That way I'm not distracted by all of the other um, uh, different information that is on this. I can just click very quickly, click this. And then let's say I'm done with my to-do tasks. I can then click collapse all and expand all again, and that will open all of them. When we are looking at our to-do tasks, what I want to look at is, these are still the ones that can, you can still see the assigned to me. You can also do the assigned to others. 
let's say I want to add a task and I want to do in um, add in new closed dates. And let's say it is due on the 15th and it is, let's say, assigned to E. Barnhart. I do not need to, I'm not going to add any notes. If you do want to just quickly assign to me, you can click that and it'll assign to the user that you are lo logged in as. And then you can click add. And now you can see those new um, tasks that are assigned to others. To um, mark one as complete, you'll click very quickly just click this little, um, you see how this uh, circle is empty. You can click it, it'll click mark as complete. But let's say I accidentally clicked that and I did not mean to mark that as complete. You can scroll all the way down to completed tasks and you can, that check mark, you can click it and it'll go away. See how that says marked as incomplete. I can click close, I can click close window and let's refresh the screen. And there it is, the updated inventory is back up there. So that is ways that you can get things taken care of um, in regard to your tasks. Now let's move on over here to alerts. There are two different types of alerts here. There are informative alerts, which you can see right here. And then the ones that you are looking at right now with the crit critical, mild, and no alerts, that is your actionable alerts. That means that you can do something here in Jackrabbit in your account to make these alerts go away. So like for instance, this is classes with incomplete staff portal attendance. That is something that you or your staff can do to make this uh, alert go away, to not go away, but go from critical, critical to no alert. So if I were to go in and complete all four of these classes for the attendance, this critical alert would then go down to two. Same thing here for the wait list for classes for openings. You can just kind of go through all of these. Again, these are items that you can click um, and it will take you to uh, either reports or the incomplete uh, attendance, um, things of that nature. As you can see here, there are three alerts, three critical alerts and five no alerts. When you're looking at this number right here, this three critical alerts means that there are three categories of critical alerts, one, two, and three. It's not adding up these numbers right here in the bubble. That is where you'll, this, this number here, which would be what, seven, eight, will be right here when I go to click, when I view, click informative, see how that view actionable is eight? That's where it's getting that number from. So I don't want you to look at this and say, oh, there's three critical alerts, but the math isn't making sense right here for four, three, and one. It is the categories that you have of critical alerts, not the number of actionable items that you have to complete. If you have more critical alerts or no alerts on here, you can click view all and it will show all of the alerts. Luckily right now, the eight alerts that I have are all showing. And then the view informative alerts, these are alerts that are just there to inform you of something. So of birthdays, of absences, of scheduled trials, um, those are just informative alerts so that you are aware of what's going on in your account and in your organization. So again, when you are looking at this, it doesn't have that mild, it doesn't have that um, uh, critical, and it doesn't have the no alert because these are these are not actionable items that you can um, that you can um, or excuse me, actionable alerts that you can fix. They are very simply just. Um, informative information for you or for your staff to look to come in and look and say oh we've got three birthday birthdays next um in the next 10 days i need to go ahead and get three birthday cards out and write happy birthday to the three birthday kids that have a birthday coming up um things of things of that nature just so that um you can still get information but it doesn't it doesn't give you this uh red orange and green um, because they are not anything that you can necessarily do to get these away. Same thing here for these aged accounts. It is very similar to the um, aged accounts that you had on the classic dashboard. Uh, there are now uh, different colors here that you can change, and then you can refresh aged accounts. Let's say you have an automation that is going through um, today at 11. Uh, you can then go in there and click refresh aged accounts just to make sure that that did go through the way that it was and make sure that you see these numbers going in the way that you want them to. 
Scrolling on down, we can go to the revenue summary. There is the current versus prior year's revenue, as well as the 12-month trailing revenue. So the current versus prior year's revenue, obviously these are the, um, this is the legend here or the key for the dark blue is 2022, light blue is 2023, and that green is 2024. Um, and again, you can just kind of hover over it and see what the numbers are um, for each uh, year and month. And then I was gonna say the very last thing, but I forgot I moved my internal announcements up. So your internal announcements here is just, again, this is very similar to the internal announcements that we had on that classic dashboard. Um, so just uh, if you want to change these, you can very quickly click edit. And this is just a very quick, easy text box that you can do that you can change um, if you want. You can do any sort of font that you want that is in here. Um, you can bold it, underline. You can do everything that you can in a normal text box, um, change the font color, any of that. So really, that is everything when it comes to the new executive dashboard. You can always go to your weekly calendar. You are still able to do that from this executive dashboard. Um, as well as clicking right up here to the calendar. I hope that this gave uh, everyone a lot of good information today. Um, if it didn't, and if you have uh, continuing questions or residual questions that I was not able to go through today, what you can do is you can go right over here to this question mark, the Jackrabbit help on the top right screen when you are in Jackrabbit. The question mark will be able to get to you. You can go to the help center where we, ha where we have tons and tons of articles um, for everything in Jackrabbit, including this new executive dashboard. You can submit a ticket, request a call, or chat with support if you have any questions as well. So I do just want to make sure that um, you know where to go when you are um, looking for questions or answers in Jackrabbit, but that is everything that I have today. If you um, have any questions, again, please do not hesitate to reach out. JackrabbitTech.com is where you can find us. Training at JackrabbitTech.com is where you can reach me. Again, my name is Emily Cole. And lastly, I am going to plug this Facebook user group. If you have attended my webinars previously, you know that I am a huge advocate for it. All um, I can say is that it is a great way to uh, contact people or connect with people who also use Jackrabbit, answer questions, ask questions, uh, see how other users are using Jackrabbit that may help your organization as well. Thank you, and I hope you all have a great day.